Hi friends, Allie here. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to crochet this American flag blanket. I designed this blanket in 2018 and it has since been only available for purchase in my online shops, but I am so excited to share a video tutorial for it with you today and I've also added a free written pattern on my blog. You can also find an updated printable PDF version in my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. I'll share links to all of those down below. This pattern is for a large throw blanket that looks like the American flag. It measures approximately 6 feet by 4 feet, which is about 72 inches by 48 inches. It features a chevron design and rib stitches to give it a unique and interesting look that kind of mimics the flag blowing in the wind. This pattern is perfect for Independence Day, Veterans Day, or for any patriot. It's also large enough for two people to enjoy and you can use it outside while you're watching the fireworks, drape it over the couch, or lay it over the bed. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you're ready to get started, let's head over to our supply list and let's get making. For today's tutorial, you will need medium four weight yarn in red, white, and blue. I'll be using Red Heart Super Saver in burgundy, soft white, and soft navy. I've also listed the approximate yardage as well. I used just over three skeins of blue, just over three red, and about three and a half skeins of white. You will also need a six millimeter or J hook, scissors, and a yarn needle, as well as navy or black thread, and a sewing needle for sewing on the stars. Below is a gauge pattern if you wanna check your gauge before getting started. We're gonna begin with our red yarn and by making a long chain. We're going to chain 252, so I'm gonna use some stitch markers and mark every 50th chain, and that's just to help me keep count, so feel free to do the same if you'd like. If your chain is off by even just one, the design won't work, so make sure you chain the right amount. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot and chain 252 with my red yarn. Here is my chain. You might just wanna double check to make sure you have 252 of them. And then we're moving on to row one. So we're gonna be working back into our chain. So starting in the third chain from the hook, we are going to work a double crochet two together. So we're gonna yarn over Insert our hook into the third chain from the hook. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on our hook. Then yarn over and insert your hook into the next chain. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last three loops on your hook. So we just worked a double crochet two together. So we just decrease there. And now we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. After our 14 double crochet, we are going to create the first peak for our chevron pattern. So in the next chain, we are going to work three double crochets all into the same chain. So working that increase there makes that peak. And now into the next 14 chains, we are going to double crochet. So just one double crochet into each of the next 14 chains. After working our 14 double crochets, now we're gonna create our first valley. So we are gonna skip the next two chains and then double crochet into the next 14 chains again. So skip two and then double crochet into each of the next 14 chains. So 
So after our last 14 double crochets, this is what we're looking like so far. So we have one peak and one valley. So the peaks are where our chevron goes up and then our valleys is where it goes down. So we're just gonna repeat, be repeating this all the way across our chain. So next we're gonna work another peak. So we're gonna work three double crochets all into the next chain. And then we're going to double crochet into each of the next 14 chains. And then we're just gonna repeat from where we skipped to. So then we're gonna skip two chains, double crochet 14, three double crochet, double crochet 14, and we're just gonna keep repeating until the end of the row. So at the end of the row, you should have eight peaks and seven valleys. So I'm just gonna continue on and I'm gonna catch up with you at the end of row one. So I'm just coming up to the end of row one and after working our last 14 double crochets, you should have two stitches, sorry, two chains left. So in the last two chains, we are gonna double crochet two together. So there we finished row one of our blanket. So you should have a total of eight peaks and seven valleys and you should have started and ended with a double crochet two together. And that just helps keep our edges straight and it also makes up for the fact that we have one less valley than we do peaks. So here is what row one is looking like so far and now we're on to row two. So we're going to chain two and turn so that we're working back into row one. So now on to row two. So for row two, we're gonna be working in the back loop only. And that's gonna create the ribbed effect that we're gonna have on our blanket. So when you look at your stitches from above, you'll see that there is a loop closest to you and one furthest away. The one furthest away from you is the back loop. So we're gonna be working the rest of the pattern all in the back loop only. If you don't want the ribbed texture of the blanket, you can just work into both loops as normal, but working in the back loop is gonna give us that ribbed texture. So working in the back loop only, we are going to work a double crochet two together There you can see that rib texture showing. And then we're going to double crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. Then we're on to our first peak. So at the top of the last peak, so it's the top of that middle uh, double crochet from our last peak, we're gonna work another three double crochets into that next stitch. And then we're going to double crochet into each of the next 14. Then we're at our first valley, so we're gonna skip the next two stitches and then double crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. Then we're at our next peak, so we're gonna work three double crochets all into the next stitch. and then double crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. And then we're just gonna repeat from where we skip two. So after working these 14 double crochets, we're going to skip two, then double crochet into the next 14 stitches, then three double crochet into the next stitch, and then double crochet into the next 14 stitches. And we're gonna repeat that all the way across for row two until we have two stitches remaining. 
In the last two stitches of row two, we're gonna double crochet two together. And then chain two and turn. And then for the next four rows, so rows three to six, we're just gonna repeat what we did for row two. So we're just gonna continue on with our chevron pattern. So don't forget to double crochet two together in the first two stitches and then double crochet 14 until you get to your first peak. Work three double crochets in the top of the peak. Double crochet 14 until you reach the first valley. Skip two stitches and then just keep repeating all the way down the row. Double crochet two together into the last two stitches, chain two and turn, and just keep repeating until you reach the end of row six. So I'm just gonna carry on and I'll catch up with you at the end of row six where we're gonna change to color white. So just continue repeating row two until the end of row six. So I'm just coming up to the end of row six. So I have my last stitch, my double crochet two together left to do. And on the final pull through of the stitch is where I'm gonna change color. So I'm gonna start the stitch as normal. But before finishing the final pull through, so when I have three loops on my hook, I'm gonna drop my red yarn and pick up my white yarn. And I'm just gonna finish the final pull through with my white yarn. So I'm just gonna pull that through. And then chain two. And then I'm just gonna carry on with the pattern using the white yarn. So I'm gonna cut off my red yarn for now cause I'm done using it and I'll just reattach it when I need it again. So you can cut off your red yarn, leaving a long enough tail that you can weave it in later. And then I'm just gonna take those two ends there and tie them in a knot, just so that they don't come unraveled while I'm working. If you wanna weave your end in now, you can. I'm just gonna do mine all at the end though. So now we're on to row seven and we're gonna continue row seven with our white yarn. So for rows seven all the way to 36, we're gonna continue repeating row two. So we're going to change between white and red every six rows. So we just worked six rows of red. Now we're gonna work six rows of white, then switch to red for another six, switch to white for another six. We're gonna repeat that until we reach the end of row 36. So that's going to give us a total of three red stripes and three white stripes. So we're just gonna continue repeating row two all the way to the end of row 36. So you should have a total of three red stripes and three white stripes. We are gonna end on a white stripe so I'm just gonna continue on and I'm gonna catch up with you when we reach the end of row 36. So I'm at the end of row 36. I just left my last two stitches cause I'm gonna change back to red after this. But this is what we're looking like so far. So I have three white stripes and three red stripes. So we're about halfway through our blanket now. And although we're gonna be continuing what we've been doing, repeating row two, we're gonna be starting to add in our blue. So we're gonna be adding that halfway through the row. So at the end of row 36 on the last stitch, we are going to change to red again. and then chain two. 
And then we're gonna cut off our white yarn and I'm just going to tie the two ends together in a knot. Then I'm gonna turn my work and we're on to row 37. So for row 37, it's gonna start off the same as row two and what we've been repeating, but we're going to change to color blue halfway through the row. So we're gonna work a total of four peaks before we change color. So with our red, we are going to make the first four peaks, then when we get to the halfway point of our blanket, we're going to change to blue in that center valley. So I'm just gonna start with my red and work the first four peaks, and then I'll catch up with you in that center valley where we'll change to blue. So just work the four first peaks as normal as we've been doing, and then I'll catch up with you when we reach the middle of the blanket. So I just reached my halfway point of row 37, so I have my four peaks. And I just have a couple stitches left before I reach that valley there. So I'm gonna change to blue on the last stitch before the valley, before I skip two. So I'm gonna start my last double crochet as normal. And then on that final pull through, when I have two loops on my hook, I'm gonna drop my red and pick up blue. Then just do the final pull through with the blue. And then I'm gonna skip the next two stitches for our valley. and then a double crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm gonna cut off my red yarn and tie the two ends together. So I have my ends on the back side of our blanket. And now I'm just gonna continue on with row 37 using the blue. So I've already worked one double crochet, so I'm gonna double crochet in each of the next 13 stitches. Then just continue on with the row as normal until two stitches remain, and then we're going to double crochet two together in the last two stitches. So I'm just gonna continue on, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row 37. So at the end of row 37, this is what our blanket is looking like so far, well, at least the top of it. So there you can see our color change right in the middle. So we're just gonna continue on with the pattern as it's going, changing from blue to red for the next five rows for a total of six rows. So I'm gonna chain two and turn, and now we're on to row 38. So this is gonna be the same as the last row, other than we're starting with blue and we're changing to red instead. So for row 38, we're gonna start our row off as normal, and then when we reach that halfway point, we're going to switch to red. So I'm halfway through row 38. I'm on my last double crochet before that center valley. So I'm gonna do my final pull through of that stitch with the red. And then I'm gonna keep my ends on the side facing me because this is the back side. So I'm gonna skip the next two stitches for our valley and then double crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm just gonna tie my ends together and cut off my blue yarn. And then I can continue on with row 38 as normal, now using the red. 
And then we're gonna repeat the last two rows until we have a total of six rows with the red. And then we're gonna switch to white and do six rows with the white and blue, and then red and blue for another six rows, and then white and blue for another six rows. And we're gonna repeat that until we have a total of 13 stripes for our blanket. There'll be seven red stripes and six white stripes. So just keep carrying on with the pattern, switching from red to white until you have a total of 13 stripes. So I'm just at the end of row 78, so I'm all done my blanket. So I'm gonna cut off my yarn. You should have a total of 13 stripes, 78 rows, and you should have ended on a red stripe. So now before moving on to the stars, I am going to weave in all of my ends of my blanket before moving on. So I'm gonna do that and then I will catch back up with you and we will crochet our 50 stars. Now we're on to our stars. You're gonna to wanna to get your white yarn. I'm using red just for the video, just so you can see better. So with your white yarn, we're gonna begin by making a magic circle. And then we're gonna secure our circle with a chain one. Then we're going to work 10 single crochets inside the circle. When you've worked all 10 of your single crochets, you could take the short tail end there and pull it tight to close up that hole. And now we're not going to join the end of our circle. We're gonna work our first stitch straight into that first stitch from round one. So we're gonna make our first point of our star. So single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into the second stitch, Then we're gonna chain one and turn, and working back into those two stitches, we're going to single crochet two together, chain one, turn, single crochet, chain one and turn, and then we're going to slip stitch into that stitch and then chain two and turn. And now working down the left side of that point, we are going to slip stitch into each row down. You're gonna to wanna to work your slip stitches loosely because we are going to be working back into them for the border. So working down into the side of each row, we're just going to loosely slip stitch down our first point. So there we have our first point. And now we're just gonna repeat that for a total of five times. So single crochet into the next two stitches. Chain one and turn, single crochet two together, chain one and turn, single crochet, chain one and turn, slip stitch, chain two and turn, and then slip stitch into the edge of each row down. And then we're just gonna repeat that for another three points for a total of five points. So I'm just gonna continue on and when I reach the end of the fifth point, I'll catch back up with you.
So here is what our star is looking like after working the fifth point. If you like the size and look of the star now, you can leave it as is, but I'm gonna work a single crochet border around it just to clean up the edges a little bit. So I'm going to work three single crochets up the side of the first point. So just working into the edge of the rows, work three single crochets. Then when you get to the tip of the point, so that's where we work that chain two at the top, we're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet all into that same space. That's gonna give us a more pointed tip to our star. Now working down the left side, we're gonna work another three single crochets down. So I'm going to skip the first slip stitch at the top of the row and just single crochet into the last three slip stitches on that edge of the point. So that's what our first point is looking like and we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So work three single crochets up the right side of the next point. then single crochet, chain two, single crochet all into the tip of the point. And then work three single crochets on the left side of the point, skipping that first slip stitch from the previous round and just working in the last three slip stitches. And then just repeat that for the last three points. When you're done the last point of the star, you can tie off your yarn. So I'm just going to join to the first single crochet and then tie off my yarn, leaving a long enough tail that you can weave it in on the back. So there we have one star, and now we just have to make 49 more. So I'm gonna weave in my ends on the back, and then I'm going to make the rest of the stars for a total of 50, and then I'll show you how you can sew them onto the blanket. So before showing you how to sew on your stars, I just wanna show you how I placed mine. So I have nine columns and I have them alternating from six stars in the first column and then five stars in the next column and then repeating all the way down. If you want, you can use stitch markers or sewing pins to pin down your stars so they won't budge or you can just freehand it. So here I have my last star. I've already sewed on all of my other stars, so I'm gonna show you how I sewed them on. So I have my star placed. If you want, you can use sewing pins like I said. That'll help you keep it in place so it doesn't get all wonky. I freehanded mine, so some of mine are wonky, but I don't mind too much. So you wanna take your black or navy thread and your sewing needle. So thread your needle, and then on the back of the star, I just tied it with a few knots. Now I will admit that I am not very good at sewing, so if you have a better method of doing this, feel free to do whatever method you like. This is just the way I did it, and they're all very secure, so if you have another way you wanna do it, feel free. But I attached my thread to the back of my star, and then I'm gonna flip it so it's the right way up, and place it where you want to. And then I'm going to grab the top layer of my blanket, so where the blue yarn is. I'm not gonna go all the way through because I don't want the thread showing on the back side of the blanket. So I'm just grabbing the top of that and then I'm going in through the top of the stitch on the star. And then I'm going to work all the way around the star working through the tops of the stitches and then only grabbing the top layer of the blanket from underneath. And this should make it so that you won't be able to see the thread either on the top of the star or on the back of the blanket. 
So I'm just going to work all the way around, just trying to keep it so you can't see the thread on either side. So just take your time, and like I said, if you want to use pins to keep your star in place, feel free. And just take your time working around the star to get it right. So I'm at the top of my star again. So I'm just gonna bring my needle and thread to the blanket part. So I went through the star and I went through the top layer of the blanket. So kind of hiding between the tip of the star and the blanket, I'm just going to make a few knots to secure my thread. And then I'm going to put my needle behind the star, working in the back of the stitches of the star. And that's just to hide my end so it's not poking out or anything. So I'm just working that between the star and the blanket. And then I'm going to cut off my thread. And there we go. So you're just going to want to repeat that for all of the stars. And then you're all done. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for following along. Don't forget you can find the free written pattern for the American Flag Blanket on my blog, theturtletrunk.com. You can also find the printable PDF on Etsy and Ravelry. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. And if you want to show off your finished turtle trunk creations, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and tag me in your photos so I can see. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.